Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Uh -huh. Who do we have? Derek, how you doing? Good to see you. Have a, a few more people already joined in. How is everyone? Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody who's been here, who's not been here. New ones, old ones. Um, as usual, give me a shout out in the in the comments or in the text there to see if everything is running smooth. And we'll see when we start. We can start off. Hope everybody is doing well. September already. Good evening, Doc. How are you doing? Thanks for joining again. I think it's... I think everything is working okay. Just give it two more minutes. Give me a thumbs up, guys, if you can hear me. I think you can. I think it's working okay. Just in case. Julian, good evening. I just checked there. Uh, all right okay i think hopefully everything is working guys all right well no much change here uh we're entering september we can already see a big change in the in the weather we had a hot week a few hot weeks there a little bit hot I don't think we had temperature that hot. That was pretty, pretty, pretty rough. Like, but um, yeah, now September, we can definitely see a, a first sign of autumn coming. Some leaves are changing colors. Uh, we just need the weather to change a little bit and more water, but it's not bad. Shaping up okay now for September. So hopefully, with all going good, I'll be back to work soon. So thank you, Peter. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> love the jumper thank you it's a bit dirty but don't worry it's washed it's just like glue and uv resin and all sorts on it i have that one for quite many years uh yeah really good quality the the good old fiberglass manifesto merch i have this one maybe 15 years now or 10 years i don't know a long time good stuff warm as well so i like it <laughs> Uh, all right, okay, uh, let's see what are we here for tonight. Of course, we're here for uh, having a look at these little heli changers. Uh, simple, just a game changer with a blade. Uh, we have the smaller version like these ones. This is just on a single hook with the blade underneath. Uh, this one is a one, two, three, four section all together with the hook. So these are tied, I tied, I find those a Partridge Universal Predator X, the 60 degrees one are pretty nice. This is a, a six knot hook. So you can see you get, you get that 60 degrees bend. So hopefully the camera wants to, I put it on autofocus tonight and it's a different lens so hopefully it's not going to act too much but for the small one I like to go with these hooks and uh, for the bigger one I went with a slightly bigger hook but funny enough it is still is a six knot hook that's the one here these are the X Predator I think let's see X Predator jig and these one are with the 45 uh degree bend but there's a huge difference in the in the size of the of the hooks they both go for six knot but you can see this one is is a bit of a beast well the gap and the curve here is a lot bigger than this one so uh, I suppose we're going to tie a big one like that. Everybody can see the, the process in details. The big one, the only difference is that there's more section, of course. Um, I add, instead of the the feather tail, I just like to add uh, a nice strip of um, the synthetic chamois. 
and then I have one a stinger hook on them and we have one two three four five section all together for this one so both um, on both of them I put a bit of foam at, on the head just to balance balance the hook a little bit more not so they don't uh, they don't sink too fast this uh, I try to achieve a little bit of a hang time but they do sink still uh, they kill quite nice because of the of the little blade underneath uh, these ones are number one blade I think uh, the little Colorado blade I think these are just classified even as micro blades they're just underneath um, could you like second my hand again? That would be perfect. That effect. Uh, Peter, I'm trying to get you there. Uh, could you like second my hook in angle with that effect? The hook. Uh, I don't know. I, I suppose you mean like bending a hook into, into that 45. Uh, what I'm afraid is that if it's bent on, on cold, uh because they are kind of strong hooks you, you might uh, snap them or you might weaken them so i rather buy them already bent uh but i'd be afraid to weaken the hook especially if it's done on a on a cold hook like that you never know like uh i rather just get get the proper hook like um the thing is i went for jig hooks of course because it's the perfect way to to present that that little blade underneath uh, we're gonna do the, the all the the shanks for this, but it basically just sits underneath like that. Kind of puts a bit of weight underneath, kills the hook, and with the extra foam, it should normally balance itself. Uh, this one, because as you can see, that that hook really really sticks out. Uh, I added even more foam, but it does balance a good bit, and the advantage is it has a little bit of a belly roll on the on the harder strip so it will flash to the side and then settle back in straight which gives it for a good action um, another one I've done a more of a kind of a big rat you know I'm a fan of uh, anything that swims like a rodent in the water uh, super easy same tie the only thing is is that on the second section where the trailer hook is I put some rubber legs and then on the front hook as well just before finishing the head I put some rubber legs on it but that's exactly the same tying as this guy both the same small ones really good too easy easy to cast uh, and the catch uh, that's the size for me that catches the most fish for me in in game changer in general and uh, these ones are i'm just starting to 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 have fun with these guys so it's only the beginning at the moment so let's see uh there's a good bit of work to get the shanks ready for this one because uh we tied the bigger one we do have a trailer hook so i want to use a uh, thicker wire uh on the on the small ones like this because I do not have a trailer hook I use a 0.7 mil wire which is a fairly flexy wire uh, it's a very light wire so it kind of helps you not to put too much weight uh, with the shanks onto the onto the fly but uh, because there is a trailer hook I want trailer hook to hold properly especially if you get a big fish so these shanks have to be stronger so I'm going up to a 0.7 uh, where do I have 0 0.8 here? Yep. I don't go for a full one mil. Uh, I don't find it's necessary. Uh, maybe if you if you go for different fish, maybe musky musky guys might want to go for the full one mil thickness. Uh, but uh, 0 0.8 for pike, uh, I'd never had a problem. All right, so first we need first section for the tail. So like I said, we have one section. We're gonna make a little one to join the tail section onto the trailer hook. Then we want one at the front of the hook, 
a third one and then the junction for the hook for the main hook and then a small little one for holding the the blade So that's where you see it's it's uh, a lot better if you do make your own shanks because you can customize all these shanks and and be a lot more creative like so for the first one for the tail i'm just going to do a simple u-bend as usual i use the one step looper to close to form the loop so like that you get a you get a nice nest for the section to to move and walk the wonders There you go. So this is the first section. Simple. Just straight with a U-shape. That's where the tail is going to sit. Now, that tail, we're going to hook it up to the trailer hook. So for this, because we don't have any pressure on the tail, we can get away with the 0 0.7 lighter one. So every time I can try to save a little bit of weight, I'll do it that way. Straight away, you see it's a much easier wire to work with. So same thing, just a little junction like this, simple, straight, little pin, nothing complicated. That's what's gonna be tied on top of the trailer hook. And what I have, the 0 0.7, we're gonna do the second piece that I use the 0 0.7 which has no pressure on and that's exactly the the piece that's going to hold the blade so a little bit longer but same principle we do another little bracket like this a little bit longer you can always cut that so we're going to make slightly longer this one there you go that's going to be the one where we're going to attach that blade onto it. I'm going to tie that underneath the hook. All right. Next section for the body. So we go back to the 0 0.8. Let's see if I don't... What's the brand you use for your shanks, Norbert? Uh, actually, Peter was asking me that. I get this in Europe. I get that from Pesher.com in France. Uh, it's from the brand Canel. Uh, the name is in French. It's called Corda Piano, which is like basically piano wire. Stainless steel. I think it's like three, four euro for the pack. So it's not it's not that bad. So that that's where uh, I usually do one big order there and order a dozen packs like this and I have plenty <laughs> so that's where I get them uh, the one step loopers Amazon yeah I found them on Amazon or sometimes craft stores but uh, shop around because some craft stores I've seen crazy price for that uh, you have different sizes for the loops for the pike and most of my ties I like to use the the three millimeter loop this is kind of the I think it's the widest one so gives plenty of room for these shanks to to walk and, and and move around so now for the body we're going to do two shanks so one we're going to do the two eyes at opposite so at the 90 degrees okay so as you can see we have the eye kind of flat like this okay and then the second eye we're going to do at the 90 degree bend That's just going to help to keep the hook straight at the back because the idea is to have the front hook riding hook up and the trailer hook is riding hook down just opposite like this give us maximum balance for the rig so this is the first one so like i said we have one like this and one like this opposite 90 degree opposite 
and then for the last one we want to have them exactly on the same side I really need to buy a new pair of cutters these ones are getting harder and harder on that 0 0.8 there you go all right doc saying he's using the the tig welding wire for his for his shanks quite tough on the fingers <laughs> A little bit heavy for the for the flies, yeah. All right, so of the first one, so like that, ninety degrees, okay. And the last one, we're going to do about the same size. I'm going to measure measure them up after, and I can show you the size that I do them roughly. For the last one, we want the two eyes to be exactly the same. So if we have them horizontal like that. Okay, or vertical, whichever you want to say. We want the two to be facing side by side like this, not at a 90 degree angle. Okay, we want the two of them side by side. So that's going to help the fly, the finish of the fly, the last shank to be sitting properly. If you put another shank, you will have to change it again. So it depends on the number of shank that you do. So that's basically it. That's the same. Okay. So for the shanks, go back again. We have one for the tail, one that joins the tail to the trailer hook. Then we have two at the front, one with a 90 angle and one the same back and front. And then we're gonna have one for the blade and one last one we wanna make, this is the, the important one. It's the one that's gonna join the whole fly to that front hook. So uh, I might be a little bit over the top, but I want that to be to be holding. I don't want the half of the fly to come off and and under pressure and give way and go into the go away with a big fish. So for this, I'm going to make a nice 0 0.8 as well junction. So this one, same thing. We're going to do just one one loop at the back okay so that's going to be the junction onto the hook so for this one you can measure it basically where where you're going to meet the hook so because that hook has such an important curvature at the back there it goes up so much uh, depending on the jig hook you're going to use, probably they don't rise up so far out, but I give you an idea of where you're going to put the junction at the back and the rest of your fly here. So measure it up a bit. And you want the wire to arrive just underneath the bend here. Okay, so you want your wire just to end up here. So measure for that. Mine is a tiny too long. I'm going to shorten it a little bit. Okay. Now uh, the important bit for this to really hold onto your fly, I am going to bend just the two tag ends. Just give them a little, a little kind of 45 to 60 degree bend. Like this. That's where the thread is going to end up finishing and like that. This is not going to come out. So 
you should have one, two, three, four, five, six shanks all together, all mixed up. Now tail. Tail, you can do whatever you want. You can use a, a wave tail, a wiggle tail. Not a huge fan of wiggle tail on these because um, I do like my glide on flies. And like I said in the past, uh, I find wiggle tail uh, do act a little bit too much like a break. So I rather something that's flat. So a little wave tail or if you want to put a wiggle tail, maybe the, the dragon tail, the slim ones, uh, they don't have so much resistance. Uh, but usually I'm pretty happy just with one piece of, uh, of that faux chamois. So we're just going to cut something wide and straight, taper towards the end, both ends. You can get creative on that as well, you don't have to, to stick to that shape, see what works for you. But uh, I really like it, it really flows at the back, you get a really really good movement. So roughly I'm going to cut that, it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, those Fiskers, scissors are absolutely brilliant for that, for that job. Done some with a little wave. You can tie different, different ones, different shape. I just find, I just, Normal slim like this, give you plenty of flapping power on those. So, uh, where are we now? Trailer hook. Just make sure I don't miss any questions. No, your guy seems to be okay. All right. As usual, if you have any question, fire away. Oh, by the way, thanks again for the latest subscribers. I think we're just we're just arriving at two and a half thousand subscribers, so that's pretty cool. Thank you. Um, usual, if you want to help the stream, you can either way support the stream uh, on this with the coffee thing, or if you can't or if you don't want to, just pressing the like button and uh, subscribing is uh, a really good help. So. You can do that, that'll be really, really nice. So, trailer hook. I like them Shinu hook. Sakuma Shinu. They're a little bit offset. Small hook. Super nasty, super sharp. These ones you feel it when you, you have to be careful when you hold this slice because that little trailer hook will really get to you. These are the 450 one zero Shinu hook. Super strong, super sharp, super sharp. And like I said, they do have a little offset if you're into that sort of thing. There you go, you can see the offset of the point. If you don't like it, you can slightly bend it back into the into the vise. Uh, all right, so that we have all that. Last piece, but not least, of course, you're gonna need a brush. So this is what I have. I just have a yellow left. Uh, all the ones that you've seen made this week on Instagram, they are made with Congo hair and Angelina fiber. So Angelina is the shiny stuff and the Congo hair is the rest of the body. Super easy to work with. Um, funny enough, it's uh, a thing I was thinking during the week. It's always good to to have loads of brushes made in advance even if you don't want to tie brush flies even if you don't need the brush it's something really nice to have at your disposition because sometimes if you want to tie something if you have to make the brush in advance or while you want to tie your thing it's just taking half the time and sometimes you forget about it uh, so i i usually like just to have an evening half a day and i just make 20, 30 brushes, uh, different colors, put them in a box. And sometimes you might have the idea that you need a tie and you need a brush and you just have them uh, ready to go. So good idea just to, uh, to have a qu quite a few at your disposition if you want 
Uh, do I see anything else? Maybe a good old rabbit strip. Yeah, you can put the rabbit strip. Definitely, you can do that. Shaved as well. Um, the one thing is, uh, because it is a big fly, uh, there's a lot of metal wear and hardware on it. I like to keep the weight as much as I can save weight. So uh, that's why I don't really go for the rabbit. Uh, just use the chamois leather. Same, plenty of movement as much as the rabbit. And... Uh, I mean, there's so much movement with the fly. You got the articulation, you get that blade underneath, uh, you get the roll, uh, you get the swimming action, you get that tail flapping. So it's a, a little bit of a crazy house, this one, but they seem to like it, so. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, no, Peter, I don't taper my brush. I just don't bother to uh, tapering the brush. Um, I do basically, Two length of brushes. I do one one size of brush, a little bit longer, usually for finishing heads on streamers. When I want to be lazy and finish a head, just two or three wraps with the brush with the longer hair, and it kind of wraps the fly. And for um, game changers, I do that kind of brush, like nothing. You see, they're not too wide, so you don't waste too much material when you're going to cut it. And uh, if it's too too long, the hair when you do a game changer, it's a bit annoying to to wrap it around and brush it. It kind of gets in the way all the time. All right, I'm gonna put that up. Okay, let me know if it's out of focus. Um, I'll fix that up. Let's see. Okay, first one, we're gonna go with the tail. Make sure I don't lose all these precious shanks. They can easily get caught in your jumper and then flick them onto the carpet and you'd be hours looking for them. Okay. So I like to have that tail kind of fishing flat like this. So when the whole streamer will be finished, sitting straight like that, that tail at the back is sitting f flat and not sideways, kind of like this. Especially if you have a jigging action, you get a lot more movement like that. So make sure it's tied flat with the with the eye of the shank that you tied at the front. Okay, we'll start with the with the brush. Good punchy yellow. I'm actually going to do it in two colors. This one might might do a little bit of a stripe in the yellow for a little bit of contrast. It is like kind of an electric yellow I've done well for me in the past in clear and colored water. Alright, secure that brush well. Now definitely it's a time consuming fly. But uh, it's a fun one to have in your box anyway. It's different, something that not everybody's gonna have in their box. So as usual, when you wrap your brush around, make sure you brush it well. If you do get tangled fibers, good idea is to have a pin, a butkin, and just get in there and untangle everything. I keep brushing as you go along.
try to divide, try to find a nice clean spot on that brush so you can get the, the thread to wrap in without creating a huge mess. fibers stuck in there get your butt in pull them out it's easier to do it as you go and you get a far better finish All right, now that tail, we're going to tie this tail onto our trailer hook. So trailer hook, remember, we have that small little pin we did with the 0 0.7. Because we're not going to get too much pressure. Even if the pie grabbed the tail, there wouldn't be enough pressure to pull the tail out. That tail will hold, no problem. Uh, and I drop. No, I got it. And I tie that right on top of the of the hook. Don't be afraid, lots of wraps, nice and tight. Okay, time for the hair clip. A little bit of glue. I guess are your... Yeah, game changers. Not too many people fish them this this side of the pond, European side, I mean, compared to the guys with the musky, uh, we not we don't have too many here fishing game changers. I don't know. It's because they take time to to tie. People, I don't know. People are afraid to tie them. But um, the last last few years, I've been fishing with them. I have to say that they are someday they do deserve their name. Like definitely. Definitely. Like most of the time when I have clients on the boat, most people bring their own flies. But I always, just in case, I mean, if they catch with their own fly, all the better. I'm so happy for them. But if there's days, pike are being difficult or are they being very picky for some reason or not very active. I usually carry a box with, with a few flies or try to pull out of my hat to save the day and I have to say a game changer is definitely definitely in that box like especially the smaller size smaller size operating game changers jerk changers take a while to tune them and get to learn how to tie them but definitely worth it all right now trailer hook a few wraps of that brush on the trailer hook As you see, when I'm wrapping that brush around, I am not wrapping it super tight against itself. We don't need to, to do all these wraps right against each other. I try to push it forward as I go because we get a really good coverage with the brush. There's no really blank space. And we don't want to add, again, too much material. The less material, the better. There you go, up to the front. So if you wanted to use the rubber legs, like on the black one, halfway up the point, halfway up the the trailer hook, you just stop your 
wrapping of the brush and put some legs on it and then keep on wrapping a couple of wraps in front towards the front of the hook and it should be fine if you want legs with it. I'm going to tie a plain one, plain nice and yellow. Actually I forgot to do something with the first section but that's okay we can catch it back. As we say we're going to do a two color one. So usually when you finish one section it's easier to do it here and there because it's open. As usual, make sure it's all untangled. Be very careful of that nasty, nasty hook. Okay. All right, we're going to do a kind of a stripey one. Uh, I haven't looked at the comments. Everybody's quiet, so I think everybody's happy or everybody's okay. All right, uh, what I like to do to change, to do a little bit of a stripe, uh, I just like to hit the end of each section with a little bit of a marker. That's going to give you a nice two-tone, kind of stripey. If you tie a perch pattern, like the small one there, that's what I did. Just have to go back on the tail section and do the same. Right at the base of the eye. A white brush with an orange marker as well is pretty sick. And a good finish like that. All right. All right, Julian's very happy. Todd as well. Okay, good. All right. So yeah, be super careful of that, of that bloody stinger because they are painful. So it doesn't really show on the camera because I have so much light, but we do have the, the base darkened a little bit. Uh, of course, this is not trimmed, so that's going to have to go to the trimmer at the end. Okay, one, two section. Now we add the hook. We're going to do our, put our two section. So we have the one, the 90 degree one. And same thing, just repeat the process. Wrap that brush around. There's nothing really to it, like hardest part is to make the brush in this. And usually one one brush like that I do, I have a, about a fly and a half wart. Okay. Important when you tie that brush onto the shank. You don't want to tie it too close to the eye. You want that that eye here and at the back to be as free as possible. You want maximum movement in there. So don't tie tie it. Make sure you have room for that eye 
let it free and let it breathe. Important for the movement of your of your streamer. Okay, bring that forward again, brush and bring forward. Actually, I'm seeing in this one I do have a little bit of canicalo on this brush on these brushes. I think I have about maybe twenty percent canicalo with the Congo hair. It keeps the fly from soaking up too much water. The canicalo it keeps the fly nice and airy. Okay, separate all these fibers, find a nice point to secure that brush. It's all about taking your time. There you go. A nice finish. stuck that's good I show this one nice brush and then hit it with the marker any of you guys remember the the first four plays of Savage Gear they had one color and it had the, the radiation sign the atomic sign on the side they were bright yellow and surprisingly it was a lure color that done really well here had a lot of fish on those colors Uh, do you mean if the fly, yeah, I see, Julian is asking if the fly file hook, yes, it can file hook itself, uh, but no more than any other game changers, so, depends on your casting as well, um, I'm not saying that, yeah, casting bad, <laughs> but, uh, uh, depends on your casting as well, you'll get less, less, less problem, it shouldn't be an issue, um, it's the same as any game changers. The, the conception is the same. Uh, the way the, the shanks link each other. The length, the size, the placement of the hook is the same as a game changer. So usually no, not a huge problem with uh, the fly wrapping itself around. But it does happen. Like, yeah, it's not a, a tangle free fly. All right. Now we have the last shank. And this one is the one with the two eyes. On the same orientation okay so these ones are vertical the two of them that's gonna help us to get that fly linked to the hook on the right side so you're not gonna have one hook riding straight and then a hook sideways we want it at the opposite side so maybe when you make your shanks just think like a puzzle Make sure everything is sitting properly because I done the, the mistake before of tying and the hook was 90 to the right or 90 to the left, but you do not want that.
all right last shank then we connect that to the front hook and then we build the head still is a little bit of work on the head side we have to link the propeller the blade on the it i mean and then put a little bit of foam to balance all that up we're arriving now september like i said at the beginning of the stream weather is changing we're definitely seeing the leaves in the tree changing colors i was out filming next little project for the winter here today I just went to have a look at the at the forest and the lakes and yeah definitely it is looking like autumn so Soon time to say goodbye to the little flies that we've been using for the summertime. And we're going to start talking big fish, big flies now. So I probably won't be able to fish too much of the season because I should be back at work coming October. So if there's any fishing video from me, it'll be around December before you see the next one but it should be a good one it should be a decent one I'm walking on a different day different style all right Try to get that marker going right in there. Okay, now I'm going to link that to the hook now. Um, I usually don't fish with the with the guest, um, especially if I'm on the boat or on the raft. I uh, usually like to concentrate on, on, on getting the the best drift and the best boat position. I, I don't usually fish with the with the guest Dirk. Um if I do sometimes I have guys sometimes they want to go out on the float tube so I usually do fish a little bit with them. Um but unless they ask if they ask I'll I'll happily fish with them like you know. So but I don't I think normally no I don't fish with the with the client. But if they do ask, I, I do fish with them. I know some people like to to share the, the day and the, and the fishing. So that's usually, yeah, I do fish with them. But normally if they don't ask, I don't fish. <laughs> I guide. All right, we have that one that we made earlier. Okay, so remember just a simple shank. But the two front, I slightly curved them. I put a little... 45 curve at the end just to hold that and make sure it's it's not going to move anywhere now that's the hooks that i had at hand when i did this tie so depends on the on the warm hook that you use you might need slight variation but the principle is basically the same so now one important bit now is check 
where the hook is sitting. Okay. So you see here it's not sitting well. And there it's sitting properly. So I have the hook as you can see. Hook point opposite as the main hook. I want to tie it just where that shank is straight before that 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 curve. A few loose turns just to get that to sit properly. Takes a little work just to have it sitting the way you want. That's it. So you see now that curve on the shank is going with the curve of the of the hook. So we have that little stop to make sure that basically the pike is not going to pull that stinger out. This is going to be solid as a rock. Don't be afraid to really thread that up. If it's bent, you can always bend it after. Okay, beauty beauty of working with wire is that it's not the finished thing that you do, you can always tune it after. You can always bend it. Tune your fly and make sure everything is sitting nice and flat, nice and proper. Yeah, I know what you mean, Dirk. <laughs> yeah, some people some people enjoy the the fishing as well as being guided okay now time for the while we're here we're going to put the <coughs> the blade so that's again that was the 0 0.7 okay all right douglas good to see you uh the material used for the tail is the synthetic chamois leather or faux suede <clears throat> I have a video on the channel about where do I get it. Uh, basically, I buy it on eBay. Uh, one of the main sellers, funny enough, uh, I don't know why, but it's always from South Korea. So that's where it comes from. And I usually get buy it and it's in a shit of a one square yard or around one square meter. And uh, that gives you like plenty of material to make like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tails literally um it comes in different colors uh there is all sorts of colors available but i usually like buying the white because it's um uh, e the material really do take to permanent marker really well uh it doesn't wash out uh marker sticks to it it doesn't bleed uh it doesn't fray it's uh, it's fantastic for making tail like it's one of the best thing i've found for for making my own tails The only thing is you can't it's not shiny like <clears throat> all right so same thing with this one we have the flat wire like this we're going to give it a bend so about the thickness of the body because basically we want we want the body to arrive sorry i'm a bit too far from the camera so i give it the bend like this and uh, this is the belly and we want the when we're going to trim we want the belly to arrive just at the swivel here so we get the spin and the movement but all this is hidden inside so roughly as you can see for good balance i like to put it slightly backward a little bit so arrive nearly at the end of the hook a little bit messy but we're gonna get to it 
again don't worry you can always readjust okay but that's basically what I'm aiming for same thing make sure it's sitting the way you want it this can be always bent forward and backward depending but basically that's it we have it set ready to go one final wrap with the brush and we're good to go so final wrap we're going to bring the thread just behind the blade here we bring it at the back so we get a nice cover so if you want if it's in the way that blade you can bend it forward and then we can push it back after nice thing about working with stainless steel it's forgivable like that now we're gonna we're not gonna wrap this all the way to the front because we're gonna have to put a little bit of foam um, I put usually three layers of foam one single one here and the one at the back and the front one is it's a doubled one so um, where's the black one black one is a little bit more you can play adding extra foam if you want this is one doubled and another one doubled so there's like kind of four layers um, this one is not finished what I like to do after is put a little bit of glue in between the sections like this close it okay all the section and then after I like to put a little bit of Gorilla Glue clear that's what's giving that that a kind of a epoxy finish on this fly you see it shining here on the foam it kind of protects a little bit the foam make it last a little bit longer the good thing with the gorilla the the clear glue is that it's flexible so as you can see it doesn't crack like epoxy would if you would put epoxy on that uh, the first bend it'll it'll split crack and water will get in and it won't last but there you go you see that 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 glue pretty oops sorry for the sound that's the stuff here thank you to Rupert Harvey he showed me the this glue and it really is fantastic for heads for crease flies for anything like that that you use foam and you want to protect it uh, really handy it's a very slow curing glue so be careful not to put too much because it's going to drip everywhere so either way you have it on on a little rotary device to, to dry it or make sure you don't put too much you just put a layer that's not going to start sliding all over the place now okay now we pass in front of that bracket with the with the blade and we rub forward So it's up to you to to play with the foam see how much foam you want to put in if you want that to be really buoyant or if you want it slow sinking or maybe you want it to sink faster you want that keep that hook as well riding properly riding upwards so it'll take a little bit of tuning in at the beginning depends on the hook that you're going to use but it's not too complicated it's only a question of adding form best is to add a little bit too much uh, because after you can always trim that form and tune it on the water if you put not enough form and you're not happy with the result adding form on the spot is really hard uh, but if you have too much you can always rip one of the layer and uh, you'll find your your perfect balance 
So now uh, I wrapped this up and stopping right here. I'm leaving the brush attached to the fly. Okay, I just done a few wraps in between. Put everything out of the way. Make sure that all these hairs are untangled. Uh, where's that needle? There it is. I do see some here in the core that are stuck to it. Okay, now we're gonna put the foam. Foam, I think this is a 0 0.3 mil, I think. Oh no, it's three mil, sorry, three mil, three mil thick. It's fairly thick, but it's pliable. Shape is, I just do a teardrop shape like that usually. One, and then the other one we're gonna we're gonna double up the second one. All right, as you can see, the first one, I kind of made it pointy because I'm going to tie it down and I'm going to cut the excess here that's going to come out. And then the second one, we're going to fold it. So that's why I kind of cut the bottom a little bit rounder here. Not as pointy as this one. Just for the final effect when the two are going to join, it, it'll look slightly better. So I'll put the first layer. At this stage, what I like to do is measure up, kind of dry, and then when you know where it's going to go, I like to put some glue underneath, and then wrap that with the glue. So give it one or two loose wrap, not too tight. Be happy where it's sitting. Now it's important here not to to go too hard because if you go too tight, you're going to cut the foam with the tread. And then that excess foam there at the front, which is going to, I'm just going to cut that off. And finish some not too tight wraps, but tight enough to secure all that together. And I'm going to bring that forward, that tread. So now our first foam bit at the front. Now we're going to give it one wrap and two wrap and we should be just enough to arrive at the front of the head now. Okay. Now we can cut the leftover of the brush. Tidy everything. And now we have the last bit of foam. So we're going to tie it basically two third, one third. So we get a nice fold coming back on it. Same thing, a little bit of glue underneath. Uh, I fish those from an intermediate line uh, down to a sink line. Depends how deep I want to go with those but uh, 
usually yeah usually uh, intermediate s3 is usually a good line i find handy enough for, for these two fish so now all we need now is put a little bit of glue underneath and close off that just glue that flap down because if you leave it open like that surely it will get torn apart so a little bit of glue I let it dry off a little bit and it's gonna tack after that a little bit of trimming it's basically ready to fish you can add some eyes if you want i usually like to put the eyes just underneath the foam here i kind of a uh, base the head on the on the rodent fly that i did the diver fly this has a lot less foam just enough to keep that hook up but not enough that it's going to make it float because definitely it, it's not a floating fly it will sink especially with all the the shanks that we did put in there so give it one final brush Now, when you do that, be so careful with that stinger because it is a little stinger. So, I'm gonna move that. So, basically, we have the final product. All we need to do is give it a brush. So, go really tight at the back. So, I usually like to start at the back. So, go slowly. Like everything, it's a lot more forgetful if you take not enough than too much it shouldn't be a really bulky fly Uh, trimming can take some time longer than tying the fly. I usually like to give it one first trim and then I like to leave it sitting. Walk away from it. Walk away for an hour or two or even till the next day and come back and do a little bit of trimming. Sometime when you take a step back with this, you will trim them a little bit better. We can get carried away sometimes trimming those. So you see as I'm trimming now, removing the layer, that black that we did with the marker is starting to show off now. Now make sure that that stinger hook is nice and open, not tangled in all the fibers. I'm gonna cut it right down to the to the bend of the hook there. Like I say, it's just time, patience, and a good hoover. Ow. Yeah, that stinger is nasty. Sometimes what I like to do is just hang them straight like this and give you an idea of where you need more. So you can see here we have this is kind of straight, this is going that way. Once in a while give it a brush, start again. Like I say sometimes this is the longest you can trim laying flat on the on the table too. Just put your fly flat. You can see with the camera there, but that helps as well. 
lay it flat on your on your table and give it a, a trim then turn it around lay it flat on the other table and on its other side I mean Same thing, if you leave too much material, it's going to stop the fly from swimming properly because the sections are going to stick together with all the material. So you don't want too heavy. Now they look heavy, they look big to cast, but trust me, they're not more difficult to cast than, than casting a large wiggle tail in the wind. They're definitely easier, even with the hardware. So are we getting there? Yes, Julian, not too thin thread will help not cutting that that uh, that foam. Uh, definitely, that's the one I use. I'm using the 150D, and uh, it's it's perfect. I have no problem. It's not cutting through the through the foam at all. Now, I like to leave the fly a little bit bushy. I don't like to trim too tight neither. Find a nice middle between the two. It has that more natural look. When you leave it bushy like that, especially at the front. Yeah, we're there now. So that's about it. I probably will come back later. Like I said, I'm going to give it a coat of Gorilla Clear Glue on top of the foam. Um, you can coat underneath the eye here as well. That's going to help everything to hold together. Stop that foam. You don't want it to spin. You want that fly to be as durable as possible. But that's basically it. That would be the biggest version. I would tie this one. Like I wouldn't go any bigger than that. No much point really. This is already a big, a big mouthful for a pike. Uh, and bear in mind that most of my my fish come from the smaller size game changer uh, so um, Dirk is asking if I ever tied a dumbbell eye um, I haven't yet um, but you can nothing stops you to put a little dumbbell eye at the front uh, if you have problem um, balancing the fly if it's not sitting properly but i find basically with that with that blade on the knit it definitely kills the fly uh give it a good bit of weight to kill it and that foam at the front as well is helping it but nothing stops you to push a little bit of a dumbbell here at the front that's definitely you can do you can do that um yeah that's it that's uh that's another design I'm happy to share with you guys. I'm going to keep on trimming it. I'm not going to bore you with the details now. I'll finish trimming it. I'll take some pictures. I'll stick it on the on the Instagram tomorrow. But There you go. Hope you like that one. Don't forget, if you've been here more than once, please subscribe. It's really nice. Uh, show your support that way. Give me a subscribe, give me a like. I like that, that video is shared to other pike fly fishermen around the world because that's how YouTube works. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. The, my big fly box is definitely growing. I'm gonna enjoy fishing these in the winter time. Uh, awesome. 
I'm going to try to sneak a little bit in autumn to be ready for the spring as well. Um, good fly. Time consuming. I don't know how long is the stream. We're an hour and 20 minutes now coming in. So that's kind of the time you spend on this flies. But I mean, you don't have to tie too many. We're going to go in the big fly box. It's starting to fill up this one. Um, I'll be ready to fish. So thank you for joining guys gonna have to glue these glue the head let them dry and they'll be ready to go should be fun i'm actually looking forward to that big yellow one i like yellow i had good success on yellow ah pop, 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 pop. all right guys thank you peter thanks uh julian thank you very much pleasure as usual uh, I will try to do more streams uh, this autumn if I have time between clients but October I'm looking pretty good so I might disappear a little bit thank you sister thanks for joining um, so yeah definitely uh, We'll, we'll see each other again. Uh, I don't know when, because I have to go back to work. <laughs> and um, But I'll still definitely be active um, on, on Instagram and things like that. So, And then I'll keep on the news when I come back uh, on YouTube. But in the meantime, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for the support this year. It's been awesome. Uh, we definitely doubled easily the the, the amount of uh, subscribers. Uh, Douglas, thank you very much. Thank you for your five dollars. Much appreciated, my friend. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you very much, guys. I'll see you soon again. Keep in touch. If you have questions, put them on the comments below. You can join me on Instagram as well. No worries. Thank you very much and uh, we'll see you soon, I hope. Thanks again. Bye-bye.